Hello world, I'm Zenit and welcome to a new let's hack of the legacy hack the box challenge. Now we are just starting up, I just booted up the machine, I copied the IP, I haven't done much more so what we need to do here is, um, this is still from the last challenge, <laughs> let's go back into our home, let's create a directory for our challenge, I just already forgot the name, it's called legacy. And then let's open legacy in Visual Studio Code. Now, maybe some of you are asking yourself, why the hell would we use Visual Studio Code as a hacking tool? It's simple. You have everything that you need in here. So we can create a file called notes.md. We have a file manager over here. We can create files. We can like paste screenshots in here. It's I mean, it's an editor with an integrated terminal. So essentially we have our terminal here. We can open up a couple over here. So we can like open Nmap in one. We can have Metasploit in the other, a listener over here. I mean, it's easy to manage. You have the text right here. Now, if I would have been using a tiling window manager, I probably wouldn't use VS Code. But since we're doing that, let's just use VS Code. Now, the first thing that we wanna maybe lock is the scan. And as always, we're just gonna take this IP address and perform a very thorough, I don't know how to pronounce that word, a very thorough scan for this IP. So let's run this in the background. This will scan all the ports and all the services and it will detect the OS, the version of the services and everything essentially what's going on except for vulnerabilities maybe. In the meantime what I also like to do is if we have a website, so check if we have a website, just open this up. Now the challenge doesn't state that we have a website, it says it's a Windows with injection. So I have no idea what's going on here. I just thought, hey, it's a window machine. That's cool, something different. Nothing is happening here. We can at the same time just do a quick scan. Let's do a quick scan of um, this one with all the default port enabled and no versioning and everything. And let's just call it quick scan. So the OA at the end basically creates uh, a text file, an XML file and a grabbable file. So we see with this quick scan, we already got a couple of services running. We have, for example, NetBIOS and Microsoft DS. I think those are both like SMB stuff. So we could use Responder if uh, to gather, to catch like the NTLM meshes or so. I'm not sure this works because we would need users logging in so i don't know what the state there is this is still running so we could do a super duper quick check as well here maybe again like this quick scan version and then add a dash a to find like all the versioning information and to make it even quicker we just want to scan for the ports we already found now it's always a good thing to have nmap run in the background to scan like all the possible possible ports did i do that yeah you do that with dash p dash so this scans like all ports that exist we have this one is closed the 3389 so we don't need to do that so we're scanning two ports and just performing like version scans this shouldn't take us too long, especially since we set T5, which is very aggressive and faster than the default setting. But yeah, that's what we've done so far. We have now our scan. Our full scan is through, which is nice. So we don't even need like the quick scan. So we have Microsoft Windows. We can see Microsoft XP, Windows XP. Oh, those were the times. Remember that screensaver of that green hill. Yeah, those were the times where people still played RuneScape and so on. So we got the guess that this may be when Windows XP or maybe a server 2003, 2000, 2008. So around that time. 
uh, we also see service packs which could be applied now those are just guesses so let's see what we have in here we have message signing disabled so as you may know message signing disabled usually means nah the security is not that so it's just a hint of how they handle things in a company usually during a pen test so if you see something like that you can guess that they may have other misconfigurations and so on but all right we have a smb thing going on so let's just quickly open up metasploit i mean this could go pretty easy i'm not sure do we have like a version or something going on for the SMB stuff? Nope, we just have SMB NetBIOS SSN. So we may have to find search NetBIOS. And then we don't really want auxiliary I mean, it's it's still Samba somehow. Let's search for Microsoft. Now, in the meantime, back here, this one is has also been through and doesn't have more information that we have on the other one. I just did this to be faster. Now we can run search exploit and pass in the nmap full scan and then maybe it finds something windows xp microsoft okay yeah it does, doesn't look like it found something useful here yeah all right set we i don't see any version numbers that's usually what we want so let's take a look at the full scan maybe we maybe i overlooked something um, doesn't look like it. But yeah, I mean, we can check out if we have something related to search as Samba. Do we have Samba? Is that all Linux and not like um os independent here we have a multi we could try this one it's like the one we we tried in the last challenge lane if you remember so let's show the options the l host for some reason is always wrong but uh, luckily we can run ip con ip a in here Let's show the options again. So set the L host to be our host. Set the L port there. Let's try it with this one. Show options. What is our R host? Our R host is this guy over here. So let's set. Okay, I mistyped. No. Let's set the R host. And let's run it. I don't know. Maybe that runs. SMB server did not reply. Okay. All right. Let's just search for net BIOS. Again, this is all the auxiliary stuff that we saw before. Then we have um, search Microsoft DS. Nothing found. Okay, so let's actually search what this is. Maybe we can find a better name. What's happening here? So it didn't find any website. We have SMB. So what we can also do a quickly is like use the SMB client. Like I did in another challenge. I think it's L, yes, and then here we can just type in the IP and then list out shares or not. Why is that taking so long? All 
okay, so we get a timeout. We can't really connect to that one. Yeah, but uh, I mean, nothing else is really opened. I, it's weird that this one is returned to us as closed when nothing else is returned that is closed. But all right. So a couple of filtered ports that aren't shown. Maybe we could use them. But for now, let's take a look at Microsoft DS exploit Windows XP. And then we have the first result how to hack Windows XP using Metasploit. Kali Linux, blah, 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 blah. The important part I want is search for this one. Okay, how do we know if that is even available for us? So we have no idea if that is available for us. So what we can try to do is we can do a vulner scan by just running the script vuln if i remember correctly so we can do like a quick vulnerability scan which will give us something back that we may use maybe it finds something i have no idea what what's going on in here it's a it seems to me like it's a pretty old windows machine xp around that era the golden age of the internet so to speak and we got something back so we have what what were we looking for before let's do msf console what did the website want us to search for ms8 06 yeah yeah okay that looks like we could use that it says it's Windows system vulnerable to remote code execution. All right, this may be a pretty fast challenge, but that's all we're gonna do today. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.